Hello Internet. So hopefully this will be quite a quick little video. It's about a little bit of software I wrote quite a while ago now. That piece of software is Emacs GME, the Emacs Games Master Emulator. And this is a way for solo role playing sessions to be played within an org document in the Emacs text editor. Now this is extremely nerdy, combining two very small niches. The Emacs text editor is more than just a text editor. It's a Lisp powered computing environment, which does text very well. Anything you need to do with text, Emacs has got you covered. Be it task planning, to do management, coding, IRC chats, RSS feeds, managing your emails, browsing the web. This thing does it all. For more information on that, I recommend you check out EmacsConf, which is a virtual online conference where people give talks about all the things they've done with it. Lots of little videos show you just the depth of what you can do with Emacs. Secondly, is solo role playing which is like Dungeons and Dragons, standard tabletop role-playing, but played one player with a emulated games master. Other people have explained it much better than I have. The best description I've ever read was in the Mythic GME book, but if you haven't got Mythic or not planning on buying it, you can also check out Geek Gamers on YouTube or Me, Myself and Die. And he does some really good playthroughs to show you how it really works. So, are you still here after all that? Now you can download this, this project from GitHub. I have a link in the description, but all you need to do is download a specific egme.org file from the project, and this will give you everything you need to start working. Now let's just talk a little bit about what this is and what this isn't. This is just a GM emulator in the style of Mythic or CRGE, as in you ask it questions, basically yes no questions, and it will give you answers to keep a story going, which I'll show you a few examples of shortly. You still need really a rule set, be it something really, really basic or something as in-depth as GURPS with all the bells and whistles. And you still need to interpret the answers to give them some meaning in your own game in the context of what's happening. This is not an AI games master, which is becoming quite popular since ChatPT has taken over. This is a more traditional games master emulator. Now the project itself is just a single org document written in a literate programming style. So this combines sections of text explanations along with chunks of codes which define the functions of the system. Now this is handy because it goes beyond just normal comments and the text can describe how the program is planned as long as, as well as my thought process and the entire design. And this is combined along with the code all in one place. And the best way to get this into your system, so the MetaX org babel load file, and this will instantly pull out all the code, compile it, and add it to your Emacs session. Also, org babel load file with this can just be added to your Emacs config so it loads automatically when you load it. Now, it's highly recommended this is run in an org document file. Some of the functions will work outside of that, but it's designed to be in the org document syntax. So all the game's master output will appear as blocks which can be folded and hidden and shuffled and moved around in the same way that anything else can be in a standard org document. Another good thing about an org document is how you can break it into sections like a layout document format. It's really good for organising an adventure, I found. So let's show you a few of the main tools. Firstly, most of the main functions are bound under a key map of Control C, Control G. And here on the right, you can see the main things. So first of all, there's the dice roller, which is what this project began as before it exploded. So Control C, Control G, and then R to roll a dice. At the bottom in the mini buff, you can see it's asking for the dice roll, and this can take any type of input, as you'd expect for normal standard dice notation. So, for example, 2d6, let's roll a 9. When you go to roll the dice again, it'll bring up the previously rolled type of dice. So if you're using a system which only uses 2d6, it's really easy. So that's 2d6, or I can do d20 plus 3, and it'll even respect the concept of the d66 and the d666. So... It'll only roll a single d6 for the first number, single d6 for the second number. There you go, 54. Likewise, though, you can also roll crazy imaginary dice if you really need to. So I could, I could roll 4d256s and get a 405 result. But it'll also do the negative dice. So, for example, 1d6 minus 3, and it'll put a score on minus 2. So it can go both ways. Anything you think of a roll, you can throw at it. It covers all your bases. As long as you write it in standard dice notation, you should be okay. Combining multiple dice types doesn't quite work, but I'm thinking about that for the future. 
Now, beyond the dice roller, of course, the next thing that you really need for a Games Master Emulator is the question oracle, the yes no response generator. And that can work with any type of question as you're writing along. So, what I find myself doing is typing out my adventure. For example, Captain Jarek lands his ship in the spaceport and the hatch opens. He walks down the ramp. This is contact there to greet him. So control C, control G to get up the standard list, and we want the yes no oracle, which is bound to the Q for question. Here in the menu buff you see what is the question. Because it's on a line where it's just finished a question, it knows it's auto-filled it. If you started on a blank line, it would ask you to fill that out. So I'll just show you now. So on a blank line, from C G Q, blank question, which you could type in whatever text you want. But we're doing this question here. Is his contact there to greet him? And here you add a probability modifier. So with a left and right key, you can start on even odds and go to extremely likely, almost certain, all the way from unlikely to near impossible, which affects the probability, but there's still a chance for yes or no on, either, on any of them, but it does add a bit of flair. So let's go, this is a likely situation. Is this contact there to greet him? Yes. So as expected, the envoy to the city, Vendel, is here to greet him. But although the answer given in that first question was just a flat yes, there are other alternatives. So, is Vendel happy to see Jarek? So ask that question. And we're not sure here, so just even odds. So here the answer expanded with a no, and that makes it even worse. So not only is Vendel not happy to see him, he's also accompanied by armed guards getting ready to arrest poor Jarek. What could Jack have possibly done? So the results of the question can be yes, no, yes and, no and being an extreme form, or yes but and no but for a bit of a mitigation. So no and means it's going to be negative but worse. No but would be, though he's not happy to see Jarek, but he seems to be taken by surprise. Again, it's, you've got to interpret the questions in the context of your adventure. Or is Vendel happy to see Jarek? Yes, and he's throwing an entire parade in Jarek's honour because it's that big. Or yes, but. Yes, but he is accompanied by a criminal that Jarek put in prison years ago. You've got to put your own effort into interpreting these results, but that's just part of solo role-playing. But this yes-no with the and or but qualifiers gives a lot of variety in how you can think about it. But there's also a list management system in this. So bring up the menu, bound to the... N and T keys, there are adding threads and NPCs, or with capital N and capital T deleting them. So let's go ahead and add an NPC. This new NPC, of course, is going to be Vendel City Envoy. Maybe we'll also add a Armed Guards as a NPC. And you can also add story threads. So if Jarek's landed to see armed guards around him, so this threat could be arrest warrant. Because that's the way this feels this is going. Now one of the things you do have in the Emacs GME is a little dashboard, which is toggled by Ctrl C, Ctrl G, and then a D. And this shows the current state of the game. So on the right hand side you can see there's two NPCs, there's Vendel, the city envoy, there's the armed guards, and the threat of the arrest warrant. Also it shows the last dice roll, so if the last dice roll's gone, flying off the top of the screen, you can look back on what it was. I've got some other ideas for what can be shown on the dashboard, but they are for the future. And again, you can just toggle that away with a Ctrl C, Ctrl G, D. Everything for EGME is under that Ctrl C, Ctrl G. So the questions can also be more than just a flat yes, no answer. Much like the surge system, CRG, it builds up to eventually give you a random event. Random events will always happen eventually, but you can never tell when they're going to hit. So I'm going to try and force one now, give you an example of what it is like. So Jerk sees his impending arrest and runs back towards the ship. Does Jerk make it to escape? So again, we'll ask the question, does Jerk make it to escape? He's only got out of this ship, so you know, I'm going to say that's very likely. He's barely walked down the ramp. He's seeing this trouble. He's going to get back into his ship pretty easily. No, he doesn't make it, even though it's very likely. And there's a random event. So it gives a focus of the event, in this case, moving towards the thread of the West Warrant. And it gives a couple of random words 
an action and a subject which you can then interpret. So in this case, move towards thread, arrest warrant, move victory. So no, he doesn't escape. The guard sees him and places him in handcuffs immediately. There are also some ra possible random event focuses, which include NPCs, which they'll draw from the NPC list, like this drew from the thread list. So the random events can be tied into the story and the characters in the game that you're playing. But like I said, there's a variety of different possible random outcomes, so let's see what an another one could have been. Does Jerick make it to escape? Again, I think that's very likely. Does Jerick make it to escape? Very likely. Answer, yes, he does escape. And there's an NPC action with the armed guards. The detail is punish technology. So again, you've got to interpret that detail along with the focus to how give it meaning in your own story. So the guards raise their blaster rifles, but the first shot misfires, destroying the weapon and taking out one of the guards. In this confusion, the Jericho makes it back onto his ship with ease. So again, you know, the punish of technology, that's the weapon malfunctioning. There's 72, I believe, different actions, 72 different subjects, which I pulled from my other solo helper system, the Solo Sci-Fi Sidekick deck, which is available on drive-through cards if you want to purchase that. Nice physical deck. But it gives a lot of variety to what could possibly happen. So just see how I've asked one question twice, and there's random events, and the different answers are giving a completely different output. So interacting with the Games Master by asking questions, and having the dice roller when you need to pull things for your specific game system, it all links together into a nice cohesive way of typing text at your keyboard and ending up with this little file of a story at the end of it. So that's the basics of Emacs Games Master Emulator, but there are some additional little features it does in the background. Within the standard Emacs Customize menu system, if you go through Applications, then Games, you will find EGME. And within EGME, you can have change a couple of things. So there's the EGME random event threshold. The moment that's set to 20, the higher the number, the rarer random events are, but they will always come. So 20 is the maximum questions you will ask before it appears. You could have it twice in a row, but after 20 questions, you'll definitely get a random event pop up as an answer. So depending on how much chaos you want in your games, you can adjust that number up or down. As long as it's positive, it works fine. And for the detail of these random events, you can change the what's in the list here. So here's all the possible rules, words in the action list. And here's all the possible subjects that are in there. So again, if you want to give something more thematic to your specific game, your specific genre, your specific world, you can change the actions and the subjects to make it fit really, really well. So if you want something really dark and fantasy filled subjects, you could for sort of a game of Morkborg, you could put it in there. Or if you want everything to be really high tech for a game of travel you're playing, you can put it in there. There's ways you can customize EGME to suit your own game. Likewise, under the standard metrix commands, there are all sorts of commands available, starting with the prefix EGME. So it's not just the core ones that are on the CG. Up. There's also several that have been added by a guy called YK Goon who decided to help me on um, GitHub. So he's created like a random names generator or random name suggester. And a few other oracle he's, oracles he's added. So one for character appearance or for character description. So he's added a few little things. I haven't fully integrated them into eGME fully yet. They're not in the dashboard. They don't have shortcuts. He's created them very much with a DD and d focus. So I kind of want to genericize them and change the coding style to be exactly the same as the rest of it before I include them fully. But again, this is open source on GitHub. Anyone can throw me a pull request with some new oracles or some new ideas. I'm completely open to people helping. So that's it. That's the Emacs Games Master Emulator. So again, I've always got a few little things on the to-do list to add to this to make it a better experience. I don't always have the time or the motivation to dig into code, but when I do, I like to expand it. And like I said, this is open source, GPL licensed on GitHub. If anyone else wants to get involved, there'll be a link in the description. Feel free to help me. And even if you can't write any code yourself, if you've got any features you'd like to see in the Games Master Emulator, drop anything in the comments which you think which might be cool to this. Now, if you've stuck this far to the end, thanks for watching. 
I know it's two very niche subjects combined, so there's not going to be a huge audience for this. But if this is something that you think would be useful for you, then just give it a download. It's going to be free forever. And if not, if you do any work at all with text in any way, and you don't use Emacs already, seriously, look at Emacs. It can change your computing life. So until next time, happy gaming.